yourself and other big markets mm -hmm. to to do uh tomatoes peppers yams um i did almost everything i could do yeah uh yeah the prices were going up mm -hmm. already as at that last monday mm -hmm. uh, the prices were going up and every day the price kept uh increasing so well uh, but I, I I have major concerns. I am also concerned, <laughs> but I don't know if we have the same concern. I'm I'm very concerned about the farmers. Yeah. I'm very concerned about them with this whole pandemic and the fact that we need food now more than ever. I'm just wondering what you think the Nigerian government or even private entities are doing to protect farmers, you know, for food sustainability at this time. Um, I, I'm not sure. Just like you find a lot of Nigerians. Uh, panic do last minute preparation mm. like two weeks ago we knew that this was going to happen yeah but no one was making any moves yeah if the numbers kept increasing you ju we just needed to look at what happened in italy mm. and spain and in the u.s and we can predict considering we don't even have their facilities you know so um so i did my shopping last week yeah early last week last week monday yeah. and so i don't have to panic today but the whole state is panicking and I'm not seeing government. When I say government, I mean federal, state and local government prepare for the after effect mm. of COVID. So if they find a vaccine the next month. After effect? Yes. What do you mean? After effect in terms of food scarcity. Oh, is that a possibility? It's not a possibility, it's a reality. It's a reality because the moment they shut down for the next like 14 days now, all the farmers that wanted to plant will stop. All the people who want uh, the livestock farmers will stop. Um, I, I, I saw a video of one of uh, um, my contemporaries in, in the sector, yeah. a younger person who uh, had to drain the fish pond to be able to just roast at that small level because the shutdown means that the supplier had not received the stock for the animal feed so how will they feed you know so it's going to have this ripple effect so my dad was coming from Ekiti today all right um heading for Ibado and got to Oshun and now found out that Oshun had closed the border without announcing oh <laughs> would you look at that so he now had to go back to Ekiti, to Ekiti. you know and, and so it's all so if Lagos you know I give it to Lagos Governor Sowolu is on top of this game, mm. you know. If the man was a medical doctor, he'll be attending to those, yeah. <laughs> the patient himself. Yeah. You could see the concern, the passion. Yeah. And so all other governors just ought to also be proactive yeah. like that. And, yeah. and we'll be able to take care of this thing. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, so Oshon announced, I shut the, shut the border. Forgetting that people will be coming from Ekiti. Yeah. You know, so there's a challenge about coordination. And um, I, I, I say this boldly, you know, when it came to the issue of Amotekun, mm -hmm. you know, however controversial it is, when it came to the issue of Amotekun, we had the Southwest Governors Unite, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. like Northeast. Yeah. We, you know, we're beginning to find uh, regional unity. Yeah. However, now that there's a challenge that even affects you, just like the, Amotek, uh, the insecurity yeah. affects you, this is another level of insecurity. The other ones you can handle because you get guards. Mm. This you can handle. So we're not seeing the state governors, you know, regionally talking. Mm. The food production. So if a farmer or a merchant, somebody in the agribusiness, wants to move the produce from Ekiti today, the person is stuck. Where will he sell? So we need some coordination. And people are in need of the food. People are in need of those yes. food. So there's a lot of wastage already. We need people, we need governments to begin to plan, to put on their thinking cap now yeah. and save the people. Because the farmers don't have enough um, income to go there. This year was supposed to have a lot of investors coming to the agri sector. Because, yes, government has been talking about agriculture as the uh, in thing. However, right now, because of this COVID, the main source of income of most investors is being affected. Yeah. So the oil people, the oil price has dropped. Mm -hmm. They can't import. Yeah. So many of them will already be careful now to say, hey, do I, want, their money? do I want to release this money into yeah. this new venture? Yeah. 
So that projection is already being affected. And right now, even the people who are struggling would have issue again. So, yes, we thank Governor Sanwo for being at the forefront of this. Mm. But we need to be talking about food security. Because food security and this COVID is about the same. Food security, if you don't plant now, you can't even import from anywhere now. Because all borders are closed globally and locally. So the thing is that we need to begin to plan. Yes, COVID is a current challenge. But a clear and present danger is not to be able to have food. Mm. And so, yes, uh, COVID, a lot of Nigerians believe it, you know, they are spiritual. In quotes, they're saying that it won't get to me. It's a rich man's problem now. That's what they think. Yeah, because they've not seen anybody. They see foreigners in, in, in sick beds, but they don't see Nigerians. So they don't think it's a major challenge, but hunger. Hunger will drive. You see people are queuing at ATM. Hunger will drive people to do crazy how, things. How do you think uh, farmers and agri enthusiasts like yourself and people out there who are listening how do you think they can approach agriculture now and what goals should they be aiming towards in this pandemic the market got just got better the market got the market just got better okay in terms of if you can take the risk go to the farms to produce now but instead of producing the normal skill that you will do mm -hmm. you need to put it in small bits so if you want to plant or cult uh, or rare maybe 10,000 birds go and take like 1,000 or 2,000 and split it into batches mm -hmm. because you never can tell if they shut down for two weeks mm -hmm. the companies will also be careful the ones that produce the animal feed will be careful to produce because they don't the idea is the, the stock should not last um, in, in the in uh, in the stores, mm -hmm. then they all take loans that reads every thirty days. So scale down what you want to do, right. but you will still achieve the scale you want to achieve. So you must be careful. Mm -hmm. That's one, mm -hmm. and and you must be careful if you have not been preparing. And if you've not been preparing, I would say that. <laughs> This this opportunity may not be your opportunity. Sadly. Yeah, some of us have been preparing. Um, uh, sadly, COVID is there, but happily, it brings in money. Mm. People selling hand sanitizers just <laughs> became millionaires. Yes. Yeah. So, bottom line is that look for a value chain that people will want. If mm. it's input or distribution, uh, but across the value chain. The sector is open and bigger now. And guess what? The what? government can do nothing now. Talking about the government, now, I, I saw banks collaborating with the Lagos state government. Yes. Do, you, do you think the banks can also collaborate in the agri sector to empower and make things easier for farmers and uh, the distributors? The wise banks will do the same in the agri sector. will take some risk and it will pay off. Because right now, as food is not coming in locally, a lot of production needs to take place. So we, the banks, the same way uh, they collaborate with they collaborated with the Lagos State, State government, government yeah. they need to come into the sector, especially with SMEs. SMEs, because the SMEs can manage projects better now than the big names, because the portfolios of the big companies mm -hmm. is going to put them in a challenge now. COVID means that uh, 20 people cannot stay together. So when they have these massive uh, machines that maybe 30, 40 people have to operate them, yeah. you know, so that puts a restriction on them. But for SMEs, it gives the opportunity because you, your scale is not that big. So the banks now need to look at SMEs through um, influencers uh, mm. because they don't have that skill set or right. the network to currently leverage on them and that's why they're not putting in money mm -hmm. it's high risk for them you know because monitoring and evaluating is a lot so right now it's bankers for the investors the capital uh the venture capitalists this is the right time for most of them if they miss this opportunity 
they've missed it because government right now is their income is dropping yeah and two they will still need to feed the people so they need to support initiatives not that they need they have to now the the state commissioner for agriculture he has been collaborating with the mega state governments as they should to give out food supplies to some homes that are you know highly vulnerable at this time do, do you think he's also making plans for the availability of these foods at fair prices well I, one thing i know about the lagos state commission of agriculture mm. is is private sector oriented i've had series of meetings with him uh but lagos is huge in terms of numbers bulk of the food is not produced in lagos and cannot be produced in lagos because of the land constraint so that's why the partnership has to come in the with all that south, to, southwestern yeah, governors with ogun okay and oyo state yeah precisely because they are the borders oyo has the biggest land mass in southwest mm -hmm. followed by ogun so they need to collaborate those three commissioners i am i know the commissioner of uh ogun state also mm -hmm. uh is a veteran agri expert right. you know practical field um i, I don't know uh, the one no, for no, for Oyo your, for your state, okay. but I know the the uh, the governor is on top of the game. So if the three of them sit together, and that's what needs to happen in the north also, north central, north east, and co. We need that regional integration now, and not you close your border. You you don't want to know what's happening in the yeah. other person's territory. Yeah. We need to work together now. If not, if the farmers don't produce would have a challenge so all the value chain that government has been talking about uh add value add value when this there's is, no input the when there's no input there's nothing to add value all the tech that uh in the last three years everybody is looking at drones drone to do what you know so we need to pay attention to collaboration now as against doing it alone mm -hmm. so if, if as you're airing me and, and you you've been thinking of agribusiness Collaboration is the next thing to do as against doing it alone. I can tell you this for free. Yeah. There's MPK fertilizer. It's not likely to be available this year. And Why? Uh, yeah, because they didn't import last year. Um, hoping that you know, uh, business concerns will bring out some fertilizer. But this COVID is you know restricting yeah. that production and so what that means is that a chunk of the farmers and when i say a chunk i mean over 75 percent of farmers use that mpk and so if it's not available what happens what do we do you know so the border closure across board is so yes some will say organic organic is good mm -hmm. but for now you can't we scale all right, so let's go to the phone lines for those who have questions concerning everything that he said. Uh, we've been talking about the COVID-19 and Nigeria's road to food security and sustainability at this crucial time. As it affects farmers, the value chain, especially retailers as well as the consumers. So call the phone lines 0809-191-3913, 0809-222-0913. You can also call 0809 Two three four five nine one three. That's zero eight zero nine two three four five nine one three. We'll be taking your questions, your contributions. Uh, if you need to make, uh, if you need him to make anything clear for you, do let us know. If you have questions concerning the market itself, wow, let us know as well. Lagos talks. Hello. Hello. Yes. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm um, I'm I'm coming from Ogudu, Ojapa. All right, go ahead with your question. So I have a question for Mr. Mogadi. Go ahead, please. Yes. Yeah. So now I am an agri business entrepreneur. Okay. And we are shutting down my shop tomorrow. You are shutting down your shop tomorrow. Wow. Mile twelve, mile twelve, mile twelve, mile 12 yes. tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So now we have, I have both of customers that have been calling me that mm. can I shop for them, can I shop for them? Mm. So my question now is, how do we go to the market and shop for people? Mm. Government is not allowing us to move from tomorrow, so what do we do? Okay, 
so uh and i feel you i feel you but you, does it involve people who does it involve markets i don't think it yeah is. it's a it's a shutdown from what they said it's a shutdown except for markets food uh, markets yeah they said food distribution but how do you get to the markets how do you move the products from the you market? mean like transportation oh, transportation market. transportation the, the the transporters will exploit them and even the produce coming you you know how our environment is hmm. they have to move through different checkpoints the longer they wait all right the thank you produce, keep, keep listening he's going to you know the more they produce go bad uh so we have to really think out of the box which we've been working on uh on something uh you can reach out to us because before we just restricted ourselves to mile 12 Ajegunle, uh, the one along and Okpaja, but we need to break that box. And but we need a community to break that box. One particular end of it, we've tidied that up. But people like you who are core into the distribution, we need to work together because the farmers will still produce. The, of in, the rural farmers will still produce, but many people don't have access to them. We are privileged to have access, but we need volume not just volume variety mm -hmm. you can't just bring yam or way, yeah. or elubo alone you yeah. don't need to bring tomatoes and by the way tomato ideally normally will go expensive it is expensive now oh no no it's covid covid is the reason now no oh. climate is going to be the reason uh around that uh, june july august so climate is still waiting covid now so we have covid we have climate and don't forget end of april the muslims will start fasting the farmers in the north that feed us, you know, don't really work yeah. during that period. So this year is a very interesting one. And you know my favorite quote on this program? Out of every adversity comes a greater or equal opportunity, yeah. provided you can find it. Mm. So my advice, there's a way around every storm, every challenge. Uh, and, and you have what you don't know now, somebody already has that key. So we have to work together. So now. how can she reach you? Because I think she needs more from you. Okay. Everything you're saying right now is just <laughs> up, up. She needs practical okay. solutions. So 0809-7000-222. That's triple two. 0809-7000-222. You can reach me on that line mm -hmm. and uh, we can get a talk. But however, uh, you are in a challenge currently. Uh, we may not be able to do any major but some if it's one product or two or three but you may not be able to shop for your clients and and that's why uh you also need to begin to look at six months down the line okay. see the longer the perspective in planning the more profitable the venture yeah lagos talks hello hello good evening good evening, good evening. Good evening. what's your name where are you calling from Okay, this is Joe. I'm calling from Lucky. Joe, go ahead, please. Okay, I I tuned in late, so but I think I heard meeting this Uh So I'd like to get the contact of the man at the station, so I can I have something to talk about as we get it. All right, keep talk. listening. He'll call okay. his numbers out. Okay, it's zero eight zero nine okay. seven thousand two two two. Or you can reach us at Agric Business NG A G R I C. Agric Business NG um, or at African Farmer M. Um, okay, let's take Lagos that. Talks. Hello, good evening. Uh, good evening, Michelle, once again. Good evening. Good evening. This is good evening. This is uh, Ademi. Okay. Oh, good evening, and sir. Good evening to you, the scientific <laughs> African scientific farmer. It's been a while. Yeah, I know. I've been listening, but um. Because I, I, mean, I wasn't ready to go to farm, that's why I have not been contacting you. But thanks very much for your, you know, great work. Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that Lagos State Government has uh, uh, created several markets close to various, uh, you know, uh, neighborhoods. Yeah, the, the, um, yeah, the cool they created about 15 of them. So um, somebody who lamented about the closure of, uh, you know, the the uh, my 12 market, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, shouldn't have to worry at all because, you know, very close to her, 
you know, should be one location where she can walk to, you know, without having to walk the throughout the through, through the state. So and then get what you need, you know, just for these two weeks or so. I think uh, you should be aware of that. In addition yeah. to what you are doing as well, I think uh, everybody should feel well served. Yes, um, thank you, um, Sadi Amy. Uh, the eco market, yes, it's, it's you know, uh, design sort that is close to you, uh, but this particular person is talking about shopping for others that is wholesale in most of those markets, uh, it's not fully wholesale, but um, you can still get things uh, available there, however, uh, they also will be having some challenges of supply. Mm because a chunk of it is not produced here. Lagos Talks, hello, good evening. Hello. How are you, How are you guys doing? Yeah, We're fine, fine thank, thank you. you. What's your name, where are you calling from? Hello. Oh. Please be more audible so we can hear you. Go ahead with your question, please. I'm just trying to do the nice job. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank Lagos so Talks. Much. Well, good evening. Good, good evening. evening. Uh, this is Mike calling from Suwe. All right, Mike, please go ahead with your question. Uh, okay, I just wanted to uh, um, you, um, say that, look, for us, we still need to have organic food. Because if you look at the life expectancy of the average Nigerian, is about 50 something and and that's not good enough one of the most dangerous things that happen to us as a people is the kind of food we eat sure. and we need to watch it i know there's a lot of interest from you know foreign investors and the, the biotech um that technology sector to you know um meet the shortfall in food in in food in, in nigeria but as long as we continue to follow that trajectory, we are going to run into problems, okay? Yeah. Africa needs to understand that there is nothing wrong with our organic food. It is just our value chain that is the problem, especially in Nigeria. If we get our value chain right, we would not have problems of, you know, um, problems with farmers not making profits on their business or um food not getting to the market all right Thank yeah you. thanks mike Thank uh you, the uh, yeah organic organic is good but until we're able to produce organic commercially mm. to be able to reduce the price uh but but really organic Hello. yes we can hear you sorry yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, this is very boring. boring. Wait, Sorry, okay, let's, let's take that call. Lagos Talks, hello, good evening. Good evening. Yes, uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is um, Bola from Obalinde. All right, Bola from Obalinde. 30 seconds, go ahead with your question. Uh, please, um, where is the location of the market? Um, okay, I can prove I can contact the ministry mm -hmm. and get back to you and also maybe put it on our social media handles. But I know um, most local governments have uh, most local, I've, I've been to maybe about five of them mm -hmm. the Lekki, the Surul area, and Co. But we would put a call through and uh, to the head of agribusiness and Co. And, and get that information out. All right, thank you so much, African farmer. Yeah. Any last words? Yeah, next week, Monday, is going to be our one year on Lagos stocks. You guys should see the big smile. Funding and making information available to yeah. people. Yeah. So we want you to please call in next week. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to redesign the program. We're evaluating, maybe we should stop it. Yeah. Every good thing must be evaluated. Mm. Uh, we need to know that people are listening, mm -hmm. even though we, yeah, we see the numbers. African farmer, don't leave me here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we don't plan to, but we need feedback. Of course. You know, so feedback helps us to know 
what to focus on what the people really want yeah. you know so next week is going to be why one year we're going to be doing a lot of giveaways mm -hmm. and we're going to open the lines very early okay. and uh, i'm excited uh, of one year of um, informing and educating the informing people. and yeah. a lot of investment every quarter yeah. <laughs> you know but i get the feedback and the, the testimonies give me you know hope yeah. you know that we're, we're impacting and we can and the conference that was held last year was highly beneficial to a lot of people yeah i think that was one of the highlights for me being i think you know let's leave it till next week, next week. We, we would we would go back and take a look at history for the past one year and pick some of the highlight moments that we did enjoy of this program and the impactful testimonies that we got especially from the conference, conference yeah. i think that was highly highly impactful yeah. because people came out in mass under the rain to learn mm -hmm. from professionals in the field share ideas and you know network with people to grow the agri sector and you as a private individual investing so much in the agri world is because you actually see a future yeah. you know and for everything you've been doing on behalf of the people thank you we'll be here <laughs> next you. week definitely yeah. to you know reflect on the moments and uh carve out a niche moving forward on ways that it can be more profitable to you as a listener and also as a farmer in the future thank you so much african farmer it's another wonderful it's, it's a pleasure all right guys thank you so much for joining into the program in the meantime follow him on social media bombard him with questions everything about agriculture he has he's got all the answers from seeds to testing of your soil i've learned a lot don't let me tell you everything i've learned all right so go on his page